Call skyrockets by 100% to $400 USD. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your Stein of coffee because, well, call is back, guys. It's back. Actually, hang on, wait, wait. Gotta get my chunk here for the video. <laughs> so, it's... Need I say more? It's insane. And this is prompted by a few things. But there you go. 400 bucks, everyone. I remember back here, you know, or even further back, I remember when we were looking at 150 and it was hot back in 2011. And that was just crazy for all of the mining jobs, how much they were spending on it. Let's have a look at, well, just call on it as an international commodity, briquettes, and then some of the reasons why this is happening. Okay, so this is from the Observatory of Economic Complexity. World coal trade, at least in 2017, was $128 billion. The top exporter is Australia. There you go, guys. We're the top exporter of coal. Now, here's the thing. You'll get idiots who will try and blame all of us. They'll want to assign the carbon, <laughs> you know, the carbon emissions from what we're exporting not to the countries that actually burn it and use it. So we're meant to we're meant to get the guilt. You know, the idiots want us to have the guilt for their their cult uh, for this. It's, it's so stupid, everyone. Okay, you just don't fall for this bullshit. If Australia, if you're concerned about the environment, and we all should be, and you know, I want to bring up this one here about Finkel, Dr. Alan Finkel. You know, he was asked if we were to essentially reduce global carbon emissions by 1.3%, what impact would it have? And virtually nothing. The reason he was asked about 1.3%, I've got to fix that image, was because that's our carbon emissions here in Australia. And we're being guilted into it for using you know, chunks of coal, guys. So, its product complexity is pretty low. It, negative 1.68. It's not the most complex product. You can mine it by hand. Coal has been used for a long time. And we can see expert growth was going down then. We can see their tariffs for it. Uh, we can see here, let's have a look at some of the historic data. We're the biggest exporter at 40%. Indonesia's 15%. Russia's at 13.8%. Where's our coal going to? Japan, India, China. Where's Russian coal going to? A lot in Europe. There you go. So this is definitely going to have, uh, this conflict is definitely going to have an impact on Australian coal, guys. Probably one of my BHP shares have shot up. Now, there's a few articles I want to have a look at. This first one, and this is all part of the reason why we're starting to see this. Germany to create a strategic coal and gas reserve. Okay? As Russia launched its attack on Ukraine, Europeans relive scenes from another time. Germany will now enact laws to ensure strategic energy reserves to cut down on German energy dependence from Russia. Now, you've, Europe have moved away from, well, from nuclear and from coal to renewables and gas, and that's resulted in a dependency on Russia for their power needs, which is utterly insane. I'm hoping out of this conflict, there'll be a shift away from this unreliable renewables and an emphasis on energy independence and sovereignty might, might be considered a thing again. Further measures are on the way for next winter, including ensuring a gas reserve is organized in such a way that st uh, storage owners are obliged to have the storage full before winter starts. The law for this is being drafted and will then be presented promptly so that gas is purchased in the summer, he told journalists on the 24th of Feb. So what's that going to do to gas? You're going to see that shoot up as well. But Habecker's worries amid a historically significant German unwillingness to rely on Russian energy exports do not end there. Germany is depend is 50% dependent on Russian coal imports. 50%. Adding that Germany would uh, proceed in the same way with coal reserves as it was planning with gas. Nonetheless, at least for this winter, Habeck sought to calm the worries of German citizens afraid of the heating in their flats going out. Yeah, this is the problem. This is the problem. Being dependent on other countries 
being dependent on renewables and unreliable energy means people die. Okay? That's what it means. You'll kill people. All your hippie, airy-fairy bullshit that will make no difference to the planet will kill people. Energy is good. Being warm is good. It's probably people... The people who are pushing for this, I mean, you see them. How many of them? They've probably never had any hardship in their life. They've probably never encountered any challenge. A challenge for them is probably when, I don't know, someone stuffed up their order at the, at the local cricket match or something. The fact that you can turn power on, you can have fresh water in your home, these are luxuries. Okay? These are not, these are not rights. These are not necessities. These are luxuries that people have to fight for, that you have to protect. Germany is sufficiently supplied with energy sources as clean energy wire reports sure. If there is such a thing as good news on such a day, it is that energy supply in Germany is secure, he explained. Yet he would do everything I can to keep it that way. Although 35% of the country's oil imports come from Russia, a national reserve would secure supply for 90 days, even if supply stopped, he said. 90 days, it's only three months. While Germany has a gas dependency of 55% of Russian imports, storage levels had stabilized. We can now say that we will get through this winter safely. The supply of gas is secure even in the event that prices continue to skyrocket or Russia reduces or completely cuts off the gas supply. Yeah, for how long? About half half of Germany's hard coal imports come from Russia and the government would introduce a reserve to guarantee supply. Uh, Russia's attack on Ukraine showed that Germany had to become independent of fossil fuel imports as quickly as possible and speed up renewable expansion. No, 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 no. You're learning... The wrong bloody lesson here. Okay, no, that's not the lesson. You don't need to speed up your renewables. Let's have a look right now. Hang on, I'm going to bring up. We'll look here. This is energy production in Australia right now as I'm recording this at 8.40 in the morning. We'll zoom in. Here we go. Look at all the wind turbines. 6%. Wind farm, 37%. That's nice. 21%. This stuff is never running high, everyone. Okay, are some of the solar. Solar should be kicking in. Where's solar? Watch on solar, the little star. Come on, it's 8 o'clock. We're, they don't have any solar in Victoria. What are we going here? Oh, okay. Oh, here we go, here we go. 11%, 26%, good, good. 0%, 54%. It's getting there. It's getting there. It's still early in the morning, guys. But how, how are these fossil fuel ones going? Oh, 94%, 116%. This is the stuff. This is why you don't want artificial government intervention in this market. They're going to stuff it up and they will drive up our energy costs. And look at Germany. Look at the mess they're in. 90 days secure supply. It's bullshit. Okay? But they're not the only ones. Everyone. The Italians. They're looking at reopening coal plants, guys. Okay? Italia, Italy may reopen coal plants amid concerns about energy supply. Italy will increase the domestic production of gas and may reopen coal-fired power, pl- power stations under plans to ensure energy security. This is what we're going to hear. We need to have more of a discussion around energy security, everyone. The normies have to appreciate this. The, <laughs> the champagne-sipping socialists, who, you know, biggest issue is the Parents and Citizens Association next raffle, need to realize that their ability to charge their electric cars and their, you know show off on their Twitch or I don't know, what, what is it, that thing there? I mean, Instagram, soccer moms, they need to realize that energy security is an issue and environmentalism is a threat to that. And we'll see. We'll see uh, how much of it's bullshit. After Vladimir Putin launched a full-scale attack on Ukraine on Thursday, the EU announced an initial raft of sanctions against Russia. The instability and sanctions are expected to have a wide-ranging impact on gas supplies and prices in Europe, particularly in Germany and Italy, the two European countries most reliant on gas exports from Russia. Addressing Italy's parliament on Friday, Draghi laid out plans to offset price increases and turn to alternative energy sources. The sanctions require us to carefully consider the impact on our economy. The biggest concern is the energy sector, which has already been hit by price rises in recent months. Around 45% of the gas we import comes from Russia, up from 27% 10 years ago. He suggests that Italy needs to increase its domestic production of gas, which has fallen in recent years, and source more power from existing coal plants. This is the thing, everyone. You may not like coal power, 
but you're using it. Okay? The reopening of coal-fired power stations could be used to make up any shortfall in the immediate future, he added. The government is ready to intervene to further lower the price of energy. Italy is already in the middle of, of a, an energy price crisis, with the authorities last week announcing another $6 billion in aid to offset price hikes following record bills last month. So there you go. Italy. Italy is screwed as well. Um, we're not really hearing anything about France because, well, they've got a nuclear program. You know? But here's another one. China. China shuns Russian coal with banks nervous over sanctions from mining.com. So you know what that's going to mean for Australian coal. Chinese power plants and steel makers are looking for alternatives to Russian coal after some domestic banks suggested they avoid purchases due to the mounting sanctions being imposed on Moscow. Some state-owned firms were sent private client notes by the lenders advising them to halt buying Russian coal as tightening global, global restrictions could cause unexpected damage to China's importers, according to people with knowledge of the matter, last not to be named. At least two of China's largest state-owned banks are limiting financing for Russian commodities. Those include, uh, that includes Industry and Commercial Bank of China Limited, which has stopped issuing U.S. dollar-denominated letters of credit from its offshore unit for Chinese firms seeking raw materials from China. yuan denominated credit lines are still available for some clients. The Chinese coal importers are now waiting for clearer policy signals from Beijing on whether they can resume purchases while traders are seeking transactions in yuan rather than dollars, according to the people. China has so far been ambiguous on the Russian invasion of Ukraine as it tries to rebalance uh, to balance its ties with Moscow with its glowing global role. Unlike some other commodities such as oil, China is not heavily reliant on coal imports, producing around 90% of its needs itself. Of the volume it does bring in, around 14% came from Russia last year. Even so, if China does accept more Russian coal, it could will likely weigh on Asian prices. So... Russia will need to divert 38% of its coal exports or 82 million tonnes from Europe and Ukraine to China and other Asian countries if the crisis goes on. Bloomberg Intelligence Intelligence Analyst Michelle Long said in a note, Demand from China and India is likely to weaken as they crank up local production, while Indonesia is planning to increase its shipment overseas. So there you go, everyone. So Asia is going to reduce... It's demand for Russian coal. And, well, we know where a lot of that's going to come from. It'll be, a, you know, for all the rhetoric, Australia's right there. We've got the facilities. We've got the shipping. Now, here's another thing that's come out recently that I think everyone needs to be aware of. This is showing us how the Greenies are the useful idiots for propaganda purposes to weaken countries. So, this is huge. We found that Gazprom... And Gazprom is the gas industry company, a Russian, Russian state-owned energy corporation, funded environmental NGOs that provided ministers to various governments, such as Belgium, and then advocated abandoning nuclear power. Okay? Less nuclear, more, ga- more gas. So the push, the greeny environmental push against nuclear energy was funded by a Russian state-owned corporation. (laughs) There you go. How many people have just realized that friends of theirs are useful idiots? Let's have a talk about all of this, guys. Well, there you go. Some interesting developments in coal. We'll have to see how it affects the Australian economy. Could this, again, again be what saves us from tough economic times? Like the 2008 GFC. Is Australia really the lucky bloody country, guys? And are people starting to realise that you've got the green movement funded by (laughs) large state-owned corporations to push an agenda everyone? Can't see France starting up old coal power plants or having to build 90 days strategic reserves so they're not dependent on Russia. What do you reckon? Let me know your thoughts and opinions on this one. Thank you all for watching. Like, share, subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan and enjoy the content I put together here, there are a few ways you can help out. 
you can join us on YouTube or Patreon. Sign up for Self Wealth or Stake. Use our affiliate links at Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or Aussie Broadband. Take care, everyone. And I want to point you towards a recent video just about inflation going up to 30%. Because with coal going up, with oil going up, yeah, it's going to keep, cost of living is going to go up, guys. You got to prepare. It sucks. Take care. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.